motor it's be good? It's awesome. <laughs> should he no, this is amazing. Should he have to change like, I just... his alignment now? <laughs> well, I don't know no, yet. No. I, I was thinking about that. And I think that... Oh, he's neutral. Neutral. Yeah, is neutral. Even though I want to help... He doesn't need to change anything. <laughs> Well, yeah, because like oh, no, even though I want to help them with the devil, I I don't want to just go out and like take joy in killing people or torturing people. So I'm not like I don't want to do a full alignment swap, but I still I'm still just like selfish and in for myself. Well, if, I'm just to that to if, the extreme. I'm not not enough to like if, do something really terrible. If the Dark Lord wanted you to do things like that, he would have just changed your alignment. I mean, yeah. Real back. So yeah, really, this is just character <laughs> like, development, and yeah, technically, whatever the DM says it is. <laughs> no, but yeah, as as funny as like shock value and stuff, but like at this for real, though, like I don't necessarily have to play like like a great like moral upstanding character. So I thought this would be like an interesting road to explore. Yeah, it's super interesting and awesome. I'm I'm glad this happens. It's very cool. <laughs> I, I hate I hate Mo Hernandez as an individual. <laughs> <laughs> on, an in, on an individual level, I, I hate him as a person. Yeah, but you don't know this happened in character. Uh, exactly. None yeah, of do, us do. Yeah. Do not metagame this, I will okay? This as a person. Obviously not. That I will love, be like, very hard. Bavasar already hates Mo for being an idiot. In, in my personal opinion, as a person, I adore Luke. He's a really good guy. I love you, Luke. But... Mo Hernandez over the course of the last few months have brought me more rage in two months than I've ever had in my life. And I am <laughs> I am here for it. Yep, character Ryan, development. Ryan, am, I, am I wrong in equating Mo's current actions to just him wanting to be Caleb from the original blood? Yeah, no, you're not wrong person you guys know or is that like from a tv show that's from a video game a veil okay. boomer shooter okay good bad i'm the guy I'm with the guy i'm the guy i'm, I'm the guy with go game. again all right i think we're all here right? mo never get in a train please <laughs> <laughs> uh ambrose jorgensen are you here oh <laughs> balazar card star are you here uh Drogos. Can, can you hear Hoagie right now? <laughs> Interesting way to say here. <laughs> it has to be different every time, dude. <laughs> I'm, no, no, now I'm pretty sure an... Auto Billy Bonk is here as no, well. He is. No, we he need doesn't. to do an actual Hoagie call out. <laughs> Hoagie, are you here? <laughs> what? What? Oh, Pick your dog to death. My headset fell off. It's <laughs> like bashed. I was like running. Was banging. I was like running back to grab his toy, and then it just fell off. Humorous <laughs> gaming. Are you here? Why do I even bother? <laughs> uh, Mo Hernandez, are you here? Hernandez is here. Mortal realm. Okay. I am barely. <laughs> I've returned from the glass <laughs> desert. Vug Bungo, you here? Ah, uh, I think so. Dark Lord, are you here? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Well, everyone. <laughs> He's here. He's here. <laughs> All right. So. As you all are kind of putting your things away in your new room, you hear someone on the ladder, and then the latch kind of, kind of like switch over, and you see coming out of the um, the trap door, Mo Hernandez. Wow, what's up, bud? Hello. Hey, bud. I gave back the hat. Oh, oh. Wow, that's really nice. It's, 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 it seems like you're really turning over a new leaf, bud. See, you, now, can you so guys give me money so I can buy the hat again? That's 700 gold. Oh. Like, I just need like that's a lot of gold. 700 gold and I could buy it. That's not too much. Well, you know what, Mo? Sorry, just bud. think about this. We're about to go do that undead job, and after we get that, each of us get 1,000 gold, so you can get your hat. Wow. So, you know. Okay. 
You're doing good, Mo. I'm glad to see that uh, you're starting to come around. Sounds good to me. So, speaking of which, um, have you heard any contact from old Willie? I went out looking for him, and I couldn't find anything from him after I gave back the hat, but I, he seems very... He says he's going to be there. When torches go blue, I trust him. All right, well, if that's how it is, then, you know, I can trust him, too. I guess the only thing we can do now is just kind of wait out here till torchlight, huh? Guess so. All right, well, your bed's over there. Just make yourself at home, I guess. At this point, Jurgis is going to go, like, near the, like, ladder or whatever it is and say, if you guys need me, I'll be in room 7. Aiden, it's not alone. Okay. And Jurgis is going to go down louder and use his uh, new key to enter room 7. Yeah, so you see that um, there's one bed, there's a pretty large kind of desk, and... Uh, there's a window that kind of overlooks the street. It's not huge, but it's still nice. All right. They're just going to, like, sit down on the bed and take out the, the old Darthag duo of the trick and I and just think to himself, is, are you here, bud? Yeah, I want to talk to you. There is no response. All right. Hmm. Um, um, there, oh. uh, no, no, you go ahead. Sorry. Jerry's gonna take out the brazier, and he still. Jerry's probably still has some charcoal left from the uh, yeah, yeah when he last time to do it. Jerry's gonna relight the um brazier with the uh with his tinder box, and just think to himself again. Hey, you hear this time, bud? Once again, there is no response. God damn it! How hard is it to contact a spectator? He's just gonna like, all right, he's just gonna like lie down, like still like holding on to it, and just like keep his mind like really, really open for like pretty much anyone who wants to like talk to him telepathically to talk to him. Mm. If, if that like makes any sense. Yeah. Um. Sure. Go ahead and make a intelligence save with disadvantage. Here comes a double nat 20. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. So, um, there is absolutely no voices in your head this time, it seems. So, for everyone else, there, if you guys just want to wait it out to go to uh, William... Peterson's place, which I think you all do, right? Yes. So you yeah. guys have probably yes. probably about um let's see, it was I'd say at this point you probably have about six hours, six to seven hours of just complete free time. So if you want to do something in the room, go somewhere, uh like go shopping. Ex, just ex, explore this city. You can do all of that. Or if you just want to stay in your room and just kind of do a smooth kind of time skip, then we can do that as well. Mo wants to try and remember where he, uh, where where, um, Bug kept his ring. Okay. It's a gem, not a ring. Gem, I yeah. mean. Sorry, I think I kind of Messed that up too. Yeah, uh, I have saying. a picture of it in D and D commands. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't say bone hurting gem, but that's no, what it does. Like, it does. I just I totally yeah. believe that bug got like some paint or something. I have ink. Put that on. <laughs> All right, so uh, go ahead and make a history check to see if you re if you remember. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So. You remember, uh, while your arm was burning, you look, you definitely looked at Bug, and you saw him kind of swipe over uh, this kind of gym that really hurt, and you're pretty sure that was probably it. And you remember seeing him uh, put it um, in his bag that 
you look over now and you see that it is by his side. You see this bag is pretty much always by his side. And you remember him putting it on the kind of left side of this bag. And it seemed the way he kind of moved his hand, it's probably in some sort of like side pocket. So then with that knowledge, Mo wants to go out shopping. Okay. So, easily enough, you make your way to the big, like, statue, and you um, are now kind of in this big marketplace. I want to look for a place where I could buy, like, a disgusting drink, like, <laughs> dead animals and, like, stuff in, like, in, like, a, like, I want to look like a restaurant, like a custom, like, smoothie bar or something. <laughs> um... Go ahead and make a uh, investigation check. So it kind of takes you a while, but you do find a place that seems to be uh, serving kind of like freshly like squeezed, uh, like what looks to be some sort of orange fruit uh, into this. Uh, it seems like their entire kind of booth is based around making whatever this fruit is into multiple kind of different drinks. Yeah, I'll go there. All right. So you walk up and you see this older uh, human guy. And uh, he kind of looks at you and smiles and says, well, uh, hello there. How's it uh, it going? Um, How much do your drinks cost? Oh, well, if you want to buy one of these uh, here uh, mangoes, it would be about uh, 30 gold. But oh, if you just no. want to drink, well, mm, this asshole again. let's see. So it takes about a quarter of a mango to make a drink. So I'd say 15 gold. 30 gold for a mango Unless drink? 15 gold for a mango drink. But 30 for... 30 for the whole thing? 30 for a straight mango. Like a, like a, just a, like a physical mango or a mango oh, in a yeah. drink? It's a mango. It's uh, imported. Almost you a don't even make the drink? No, no, no. Uh, I'm a... Uh, I, uh, well, I, 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 I have a bunch of mangoes, and I uh, get the juice out of them, make them into drinks, but uh, I can sell you just a straight-up mango if you want. No, I want to buy, like... Okay, oh, okay, wait, yeah. I want to buy, like, to-go... Oh, some mango <laughs> juice. Well, uh, all my drinks are uh, to go, I guess. But uh, let's see. So it's a mango drink. Do you want anything else in it? I got some basic bartending stuff here. Actually, Hello wait there. a second. You know, um, can I work for you? Are you looking to uh, looking to hire someone? I have. I'm a great bartender. Uh, no, sorry, man. It's a kind of a one person job. My, uh, my, uh, wife used to help me, but you know, things happen. <laughs> what type of things happen? Mango induced, uh, <laughs> trauma. <laughs> he's not, uh-huh. keep, he's not keeping his story straight. I know. I knew he buried his wife under the gazebo. He told me something different. So I heard that you bear. No, okay, well, you game, actually. <laughs> That's just I was gonna actually game right there. Oh <laughs> wow, you're just telling us not to, you effing hypocrite. Yeah, no, I, just, I saved myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I buy, okay, wait. How many people are in the coalition right now? There is Drogos. There is Humorous. There is Bug. Seven. Balazar. Otto. There's seven. I Who's mean. the other one? It's not me. There's oh, seven, Ambrose. You. Ambrose is the other one. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's. So I bought seven. If I buy seven drinks, can I give you a cool fifty gold for that? Fifty gold for oh, um, you know, mm-hmm. it, buy, buy in bulk, uh, give me a little bit of a discount. That's uh, uh, I don't know. I uh, well, I don't have a lot of mouths to feed, <laughs> but uh, well, uh, buddy, uh, this is a uh, well. Can't redo a discount, sorry. Oh, 
Well I'm then, sorry. you you uh, keep kind of just uh, going blank face there. <laughs> I hate it's like you. you uh, got some sort of mango thrown at your head. Mo's gonna um. Mo's just gonna pull his knife and just like walk up to this man and be like, <laughs> okay. and just be like, "Give me the mango for fifty gold." No, 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 no I'm not gonna do that. I want to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what? What would you, what'd you, what'd you say, Michael? I didn't, I didn't say anything, but why are you <laughs> like this? I'm actually this? not going to do that because I forgot, I'm gonna get capitally, I forgot that I'm going to get capitally punished. Um, you pull a knife in this mango, give me your mango for more than you told me it's worth. <laughs> um, so... He's saying okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna spit at this man's feet also and leave his shop. Well, well uh hope uh mango doesn't find your way into the uh prefrontal cortex, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's hinting at how he killed his wife. Can I, can, can I, I just, knew like, it. for like a food you market? I was crazy. For a what? Like a food this market just like can buy like food. Ballista set up that <laughs> somewhere here. You know the war you know the war wolf? <laughs> oh my god. It's the apple for mangoes. Mango to that yeah, so... frontal lobe. <laughs> Prefrontal cortex. Okay. <laughs> Mango to <laughs> trauma. What the hell is that? <laughs> Alright, so uh, you spend some time and look around and you do see just some uh, like, f- like fruit shops that seem to be pretty busy, but So yeah, I'll go. I'll go into one. I'm just looking for like any sort of fruit, like maybe like mm-hmm. pineapple or mango or like grapefruit. Yeah. So you um. <laughs> so... Also bugs. I'm looking to buy bugs. Oh, okay. Um. You see that they're mostly, um, kind of like out of stock already, and you see a kind of a younger looking dwarf kind of come up behind you and say, "Uh, yeah, what do you?" What are you uh looking there? What are you look- looking for there? I'm looking for a Mr. Uh, Mr. Elf guy. My last name is uh Michelle. Um call me Mr. Michelle. I'm looking for um either drinks or fresh fruit. Uh well, we have some uh some apples, some snowberries, some coconuts. Oh, coconuts would be perfect. Yeah, I'm uh. How much do you charge for two coconuts? Uh, well, let me see. It'd probably be probably around uh, forty gold for two coconuts. Forty gold? What the hell? Uh, they're not easy to get up here. What's like the cheapest fruit you got? Probably uh, snowberries. How much is a snow? How how big is a snowberry? Uh, if you, uh, look over here, and you see this, uh, they kind of look like blueberries, but more pale, basically. Uh, you can, uh, get, you know, like a handful for probably three gold. Pretty common up here. Okay, yeah, I'd like to buy five handfuls, please. All right, then. Mo's gonna use both his hands to scoop them out. All right. Here's a little, uh, bag for ya. Okay, so yeah. if it's f- if three gold, five would be fifteen gold I give him. All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah, sorry about the price on the coconuts, but they're uh, they're pretty hard to get up here. I get that. And then, do you know where I could buy like dead bugs? That would not be my uh, expertise, buddy. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, Mo is gonna find. Mo is gonna. Can I just, like, walk around and, like, look for, like, a dead animal? Or, like, bugs? Or, like, an animal? Some sort of animal I can, like, catch? Or, like, I don't know. I want to kill what? something living. <laughs> Go ahead and make an investigation check, I guess. <laughs> the phrase, I just want to kill something that's living. <laughs> is just... <laughs> Ellen's foot. Wow. All you see around are... Are, uh... Are just kind of people around... <laughs> You really don't see any sort of bugs or any wildlife at all. Before Mo drags someone into an alley. Uh, Kyla's like, looks like a meat shop. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and, uh... I'll, I'll say that pretty quickly you find one. There seems to be kind of... <laughs> there uh, seems to be a, uh... A, uh... Like a mid-aged looking uh, dwarf behind the counter. You see, uh, behind some, like, glass... You see some like ice and like s- and like snow that these pretty large slabs of meat are on. Can, um, can I buy? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in. Mm-hmm. Um, can I buy things out of your trash, please? Excuse me. I'm looking to buy some trash meat. Trash meat. Well. You're not the first one to ask for that. Uh, five gold. I'll give you everything I have in the, the old mold bin. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Here's All five right. gold. Thank you. And he just kind of um, walks out from from behind a counter with a bucket. And you see him kind of dump some, probably like a half a pound of meat that seems to be covered in, in some... Black mold. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Cool. Thank you. Um. So then, I would like to uh, just like go outside and like I just want to find like a bench or something to sit on. Okay. Sure. And then on this bench, I want to take out my bartender's kit. Mm-hmm. And inside of my flask, I want to make a. I just want to like squeeze the moonberries and. Make a like moon be- moonberry drink inside my flask. My All water right. skin. Uh, Let me see. Brian, actually, um, do you know what check a bart tenders? We did dex checks for me. Yeah, oh, okay. it's, de- it's a dex check. Okay, yeah. So and he, he just gets. Prof- uh, I think he has the kit, so he gets proficiency. So it adds plus two. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and just roll a straight dex check. We'll add two to it. We do plus two to checks. With profi- uh, if you have a, a, a kit like that, you add your proficiency bonus. Yeah. I, I know, I just mean with the book. I think it's dash B. And I then, think you can, yeah. but... But, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. So, um, you pretty e- easily start to, like, s- like, s- like squeeze these berries into the... Uh, into your, like, flask. Cool. And then... So yeah, then I take my water. So I have my that's okay. So I have two water skins. I'm gonna take out my other water skin, and then I want to pour some of the a little bit of that drink, like just like a single serving size of that drink, into mm-hmm. my other water skin. Okay, um, I'll just assume you probably pour the water out of the one that does yeah, have water in it. Oh, I forgot it has water in it. Yeah, I'll take that out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and then I want. Like, like, just take a lot of the black mold meat, and I want to like take my knife and just chop it up into little pieces, and then slip it into the water skin okay. with the one the one with, with a lot less drink in it. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take I have a, I have poison that makes you unconscious for a little while, it knocks you out. I want to put a few drops of that in both water skins. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna shake it up a little bit, put the cap on, um, and I will uh. I will put that in my bag and I'll walk back to the uh, inn. Okay. While he was doing all of that, does anyone else want to do anything in this time period? Am I said it's about six or seven hours. And Drogos, I'll say that as you keep trying to do this, there's still just no voice whatsoever. I can't redo it. I assume. So. Uh, you would get the same result no matter what. Bug is just curled up in his warm blanket on the floor, reading the Book of Artundis. Okay. Since it's the only book he Bug, uh, can you even read? Yeah, what do you mean? Of course I can read! I I see you count on your fingers. Well, you know, you, you can be bad at math and good at other things. I just assumed, I'm oh, sorry. Ambrose. That's fine. Why are you talking like that? Have you fallen mentally dull? Uh, no. I think his tongue's still frozen. It, couldn't oh. you, like, touch your ring to your tongue? Doesn't it set things on fire? Uh, 
And my tongue isn't cold anymore. Hey, I have a I have a piece of it, and Ambrose is going to hold a piece of his tongue that, oh! that got shattered. Jesus! You gonna eat that? Uh, it's my tongue, and it's not on you anymore. I blame either you or Mo for my missing tongue. I blame Mo. Maybe. I would blame your tongue. My tongue is much I stronger. Think all three of you in equal measure. Uh, I hear Mo, God typing. Mo, <laughs> for, steal for stealing the, the stupid demon hat. Bug for summoning the giant ice block in the first place, and you for apparently never having learned as a child and deciding to lick the giant ice block. I just wanted to try it. Bug, where did you even get that flute? Uh, I was in a shop. Um, I can't even remember. I got it from like a rude old woman, I think. She said it was a mystery flute. Is this the oh. shop over in uh, Resin? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was cool. It was like a mystery flute. So I said, oh, a mystery. Plus, it's like a high quality, like, wooden flute. It's nice. Is it? Is it still glowing like it was? Oh, uh, let me see. And Bug takes it out. Uh, you see now that the runes on it are still glowing red. Yeah, it's still glowing. I oh. The way I figure, I think, uh, I think she mentioned something about it, like, uh, I assume it has more than one use to it, so uh, I'm just gonna let it rest. Wow. Well, do you know what it says? No, I'll figure it eventually. It's my little mystery. Otto kind of like waddles over and like looks at it while it's still in your hand. Oh, I, I, I can read that. What language is it? It seems to be in Infernal. What? Why do you know Infernal? I've read a lot of books. That doesn't answer my question. But what does it say? It says, "The Bard's Wabajack." Whatever that oh, means. That's a strange name, but uh, I guess I know what to call it now. Fuck, so Wabajack. No idea. But I know that I'm a bard, so I guess this is mine. Why is there even a word in Infernal for Wabajack? I didn't even know that was a word in common! I don't even know what it means. Well, can I try that flute? Mm, I'm letting it rest. Sorry, buddy. Selfish. I don't want to overwhelm the magic. Also, I don't think you can play it. You know, you're... You kind of need a tongue, like you, to. to use up low sideway. You don't need a tongue. You need a tongue to tongue the hole, or else you can't make good music. You have to learn to tongue. I don't play staccato anyway. Hole, Ambrose. <laughs> no. Ambrose, you're not a bard. You can't play the bard's wabajack, whatever that is, because it's for bards, apparently. I can't even try. I'm worried that it'll explode like a cool magic. I want to like keep it around as much as possible. I figure I'm only going to use it once every few days, maybe. Or whenever it's funny. I hate well, to break up the merriment here, but uh, has anyone seen Mo? I think he ran off again. He's probably he's probably gonna go find that guy with the gun. Isn't that what it's called? He said it was a gun. I thought we were all coming for that. I thought he uh, he probably went off to go steal something else. Uh, what time is it getting to be, anyways? You guys can see um, out of the window uh, that it that it seems to be um, about ten o'clock now. You've been playing around for a very long now. time. <laughs> he never showed us where to go, did he? No, he did. 
I thought that I, I came. I thought I came back today when I was done with my stuff. Oh yeah, I'd say that I. I guess just about now is when you like come back. Okay. Maybe we should head out. Oh, well, there he is now, the man of the hour. I'm all. Hello. What? What were you doing? You never told us. Yeah, I'm just. I'm trying to get my gold chain. You know, you know how it is out here. I guess. In these streets. What? Never mind. I just. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find a jeweler to so I can make my chain. But no one here appreciates art, apparently. So. I feel like a blacksmith would be a better choice. Maybe. They make gold. I'll check that. Out. That's a good idea. Do you have any gold coins? Just have to melt those down. I actually have a rock of gold. Oh, there you go. Why do you have a rock of gold? Ambrose threw it at me. That was Wait. kind of him. It was I very did? Nice of yep, it's worth fifty dollars, and it's mine. What? What's Why a dollar? You that? What kind I of stole. I tried to steal from it? you, so you threw it in the air to distract me and then slap me. Oh. I just found that on the ground. I don't think it's worth fifty dollars. It's worth fifty dollars. Uh, Genghis Mangus told me. Oh no! What's a dollar? I fifty GP. I mean, what's a GP? Uh, what's our GP? I think that is. I. Mm, oh, I know. And he kind of like opens one of his books and flips through the like pages. It says here. In the poor people's in like in its encyclopedia, that GP is a slang term for gold pieces. Oh, wow! I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, good for you, I guess. Making money where you can. Also, um, I believe that the dollar was used in the ancient demon societies. Wow, that's really scary! That's not disconcerting at all. Well, dollars. Like um, are we going to meet strange, William Peterson now? We probably should. Mo, you said, well... What time did you say we should meet him? It was later, right? Yeah, when the torches go blue. Well, if it's anything... Let's like go a little night. early. I don't want to be out past blue. I believe the torches turn blue at the stroke of midnight. Alright, you guys can... You guys can... If you guys all want to go now, we can go. I'll just... I can guide you guys there. If you wouldn't mind, that'd be... Pretty great. I don't see oh, why oh. not. And Ambrose like gets up and like gets ready to go. All right. So I'll say that all all of you um are kind of kind of get ready and kind of he head out onto the uh, main street. I would and... like to go get Drogos from room seven. Oh yeah. yeah I'm not gonna forget. <laughs> <laughs> As we yeah. walk past the door, we all just kind of like punch it very loudly so that it can be <laughs> leaving. Alright, I'm coming to out. And yours literally just gets up because he keeps everything on him and my head's out. I was like, yo, what's up, guys? Uh, when he opens the door, Bug's gonna cast Prestidigitation to make it his room smell like farts. Alright. <laughs> Easily that enough, you do. We're We're heading out to meet up with this Peterson guy. Come on. Alright. Alright, so, Mo, it is up to you to guide the rest of the co the rest of the coalition back to William Peterson. Alright, cool. So... Go ahead and make a history check with advantage, because you have technically been there twice now. Oh, sorry, I was in the wrong channel. Okay, yeah, so easily enough, you guys actually 
uh, take a right out of your uh, inn, and then go around the corner to a right, and probably after just two minutes of walking, you see a very broken down old stone building. Is is this really it? Yes, it is, Otto. I thought a guild would be very fancy. I don't think that this is for the guild. It's just where we're meeting him. Oh. Not all guilds have to be fancy. Well, that's, well, that's concerning. Here, I t- he... take this, uh, uh, Otto, um, and Mo's going to hand him one of his daggers. Oh, an edged weapon. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Hernandez. <laughs> You're welcome. One of those, kid. Otto is going to hold it with like both of his hands and just keep it out in front of him as he walks. An edged weapon! Balasar is going to kind of like gently lower his hand so that he's angling the blade towards the ground. Balasar, I do not want to stab the ground. I want to stab... <laughs> right. The we bad people. This is improper di- weapon discipline. Do I hold it the other way around? Balasar is going to withdraw his dagger fr- from his boot and kind of hold it at a ready position, but not jutting out so that he'll stab anyone he kind of walks towards in a brisk pace to kind of oh. demonstrate to Otto how he should be holding a dagger safely. I see. It's literally a tad. Uh, bu- Bug Alistair in response is gonna very seriously. Bug <laughs> is gonna take a dagger from his boot and then uh, one second. All right. Bug takes a dagger from his boot. It's like, no, you hold it like this, and then holds it like the picture <laughs> I put. Oh, okay. And Otto <laughs> gets I'm into serious. that exact <laughs> position. Do, do not take the cobalt's advice, Otto, That's, please. This is the best way to hold a dagger! No, no it's not. I believe you were trained on the battlefield, while Bug was trained knowing cobalt's, no offense, but probably on the streets. I'm yeah, pretty sure we are currently in a we, network of tunnel systems in a We are currently on a street, therefore I will take Bug's advice. His advice is flawed advice. It's very good advice! No, it's not. You're bad with weapons. Anyways, are we gotta knock Mo, or will he just open the door to us, or... Um, we can go in. There's tables we can sit at inside and pass the time until he pro- he'll probably just show up. I think he flew in last time from the roof. Well, Balazar will okay, test the Yeah, Balazar... Balazar, open the door! Does the door open, or does Balasar have to the, do the thing? The door opens. <laughs> so, as you touch the doorknob, it seems to kind of shake and then fall off of his fall off of its hinges into oh. the building. A large slam. Oh. Oh, dear. It seems this building is in disrepair. Yes, astute observation. The opposite of repaired. Yes, I use the prefix dis. So. You're very intelligent for a 12 year old. Yes. What? Yes, I am. (laughs) Yes! (laughs) So. As you guys step in, you see there are a couple of candles lit, but all you really see in there is at uh, a table um, kind of towards the back of this very large tavern room. You see a dwarf sitting there, um, just barely visible in the candlelight that seems to have an eye patch, and he's just kind of, he has his arms crossed, kind of looking at all of you. Hi! 
Hello there. Are uh, are you this uh, this well group we've heard of that uh, travels with uh, Diller here? I'm Bug. Who's Diller? Uh, that would be Mo. Uh. Huh. Okay. Well, anyways, I know that's him. I'm sure you all are uh, his group he spoke of. And he starts to get up. Now, um, I just need to uh, make sure you're all, uh, you're all uh, legit, you know. I'm not legit, I'm Bug! And uh, he walks over to you, Bug, and he taps you on the nose. Okay, the kobold's good. What? He wa- he walks up to you, Ambrose, and also taps you on the uh, nose. I step back. Uh, can I... Can I... What are you trying to do, sir? Can I at least shake your hand, please? Ambrose, like, looks at his hands, and then his hand, like, like he doesn't want to get it dirty, <laughs> and then he shakes his hand. Okay. There we go. <laughs> You're good. Uh, Dragonborn guy in the black clothes. Uh, I can't... Can you just shake my hand? He's just kind of looking up at you. Are you referring to Jorgos? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Jorgos shakes his hand. Alright, you're good. Uh, big guy. Big Dragonborn guy. Mind shaking my hand? Balasar will shake his hand. Ah, uh, good, good. Uh, hello, little, uh, gnome guy. Mind putting away that dagger, please? And Otto just kind of looks at Balzar, and you just hear him say, Should I kill him? No! No, put away the dagger, it's okay! Should I kill no. him? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Dwarf. Yeah. I had a very different idea of why we were coming here. Put the put the dagger away. Um, Otto just kind of drops. He he goes to put it in a like pocket, but it just kind of drops to the floor. But he doesn't even notice. <laughs> um, and uh, the dwarf kind of warily kind of steps up and taps Otto on the nose. All right, you're strange but good. Um, okay, Mr. Skeleton, I'll just shake your hand. Kind of a lack of nose. Oh, well, I was gonna, uh, I guess I could still do it. And he kind of, like, bends down so that they're at eye level. Uh, nice to meet you. Here you go. <laughs> and he shakes his hand. Oh. There you go. You're all good. I just wanted to make sure there were no, uh, no, Vampires? uh, Ill- illusions. That is all. Oh, I gotcha. You see, I, I don't know if you know this, but most illusion spells do not change your actual size, just your appearance. So, anyways, you're here to see Mr. Uh, Mr. Peterson. Is that right? Sure! All right, then. Well... If you follow me, and he starts to walk into one of the back rooms of the bar. And as you guys follow him, you see that he walks into this room, and you see that there are all kinds of just barrels and, like, glass containers that look like beakers, and kind of, like, groups of powder on, like, paper, all along these, like, tables in this kind of oblong kind of room. Well, this is probably going to be confusing, but, and he walks over to a huge barrel in the corner. You see on it uh, this kind of uh, engraving into the wood that says gunpowder. You see him kind of reach up for the lid and open it, and he looks at all of you and, say, and says, well, go on in. They're all waiting down there for you. Mo will go ahead first. <laughs> okay. As you start to dive in, you see that instead of 
whatever gunpowder is, seems like halfway down this large barrel, there's a ladder. You see that it goes down. It's pretty well lit. You see that it goes down probably 30 feet into the ground. So I'm assuming you climb down. You start to climb down that. I do. And the rest of the party, as you crowd around this large barrel, you see the same thing as Mo starts to make his way down the ladder. That is a deep hole. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, can Ambrose see if the tunnel is supported? Uh, you see that the sides are made out of what looks to be cobblestone and brick. And the ladder... Interesting it... construction. Yes, well... After you... It's one of the, like, papers with, like, the powder, like, just, like, open, like, anyone can pick it up. Yeah. Uh, do you like to pick up one of the, like, piece of paper with, like, the powder on it? And, like, just, uh, you know? I wouldn't touch that there, Dragonborn. Uh, what's up I don't it? know what Mr. Peterson has been making of late, but knowing him, it's probably explosive. Keep that in mind. Sorry, his head is going to perk up at the at the word explosives. So, would you all like to make your way down this ladder? Dive into yes. the hole. All right. So, Mo, you're the first one to reach the bottom. You see now um, a very short, probably ten foot hallway in fr in front of you lit by just torches and it's the same kind of gray kind of stone uh that make that makes up the ceiling walls and floor it's all it's all kind of the same kind of cobblestone and you see a very large iron door with a with some sort of like uh like uh some sort of like uh window in the top part that seems to um you know like like when like they open the door and it's like what's the password <laughs> yeah yeah i i i i'm yeah that's basically the what it is. i got it my brain had an aneurysm sorry but yeah so it's basically that and soon enough the rest of the coalition is right behind you and all of you hear um uh a uh, kind of like slamming noise and uh, you can kind of gather that he just kind of closed the um, the latch at the top of the barrel. So Mo, in front of you is this very large metal door. Knock on it. All right. Kind of echoes through this chamber. But you hear footsteps on the other side, and you see the little window kind of slide open. And in it, you see the familiar eyes of William Peterson. Hello, William. I'm here with my um, coalition. He kind of, like, looks, like, past you and sees everyone there. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, you're a little early, but, well, I guess that's a good thing. And you see the, um, the window kind of slam shut, and you hear probably about, like, six or seven clicks and thuds on the other side of the door, and you see this kind of swing open, this large door swing open, and past... Uh, William, you see what looks to be some sort of, um, like, uh, oval-shaped, pretty extremely large kind of round table. Uh, and you see that there are quite a few dwarves already sitting down. Ambrose is gonna whisper to Bowser, I bet you could open that one. Ye of little faith. So, 
come on in and take a seat. We all have a lot of explaining to do. And he kind of almost in a way skips over to the uh, end of this table and takes kind of the head chair. So, as you all walk into this room, you see a very large table. There are maps and what look to be like building layouts all over the walls, kind of pinned there with nails. And you see probably about 20 dwarves around this huge round table. And there are seats open for all of you. What would you like to do or say or anything, really? Hello. I mean, yeah, I'll sit at the table. Okay. Oh, yeah. yep. I'll, I'll just say that uh, everyone kind of finds a seat at the table. <laughs> That's awkward. And all... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, all of the dwarves are just eyeing all, all of you. They all look kind of nervous. And um, you see on all of them that there's a pretty common trait that they all have some sort of some sort of like like scar where it looks like they've been kind of cut at the top of their head. Um, I'd say yes, Mister Bug Bungo. Um, and uh, they all just kind of look at you, and you see the uh the very tall William Peterson stand back up as you all sit down. Wow, so. This was the group that old Brothier chose. Is that right? For the most part, yeah. He uh, went under the name <laughs> Brock Holdra. Yep. Huh, well. What well, exactly are we here for? Well, you see, Brothier always said that, well, he knew he would never really, uh, you know, kick the bucket. But if he somehow did, well, it definitely wouldn't be while he was sailing. So, he said to me that, well, in the case of his confusing death, he would probably be traveling with a group and he would be sure to make a note to them if he knew he was somehow going to die. And what Diller said to me yesterday, I believe, is it true? Can you all confirm that this Brock Holdra is really dead? Well, sir, check out the grave with you. He's gone. Dead, cremated, and buried. I'm curious. What What exactly did his will say? Uh, Jared's going to take it out and do you, ask, do you want me to read all of it or just the part that mentions you? Oh, well, I'm honored that he mentioned me. But I'm guessing the... Oracles <laughs> are involved. Yeah, uh, and then Juris is just gonna read out the entire thing. I've read it like ten times, so I'm gonna read it again. Yeah, yeah. No, we all know it. Um, no, but yeah. Um, he goes. Hmm. Well, that's not a surprise, I guess. You see. How much did Brock tell you? I mean, to me, literally nothing. I don't know. Bono over here probably knows a bit more. And pretty much he told me all... it was a dwarf. Hmm. Well, didn't spill the beans, I guess. How long was he traveling with all of you? Two months, maybe? Yeah, um, just about two. Maybe two. 
Wow. Well. Say, did he ever... Well. Did he ever get that leg fixed? Yeah, yeah, he did in his uh, voice. Yeah. Too. Interesting. <laughs> you see him quickly kind of hop over to um, one of the many papers on the kind of pinned to the walls and you see him kind of make a quick note on it and you see him kind of hop back to the end of the table. So, how much do you know about, well, Volunder and the Oracles? You know that they exist, really? Not hmm. concrete. I see. Well, no more hiding it. We, and he kind of raises his arms around, are the Volunder Freedom Association. You see, not all of us enjoy hearing voices in our sleep and when we get in trouble with the law. So, well... We also would like to end the reign of these oracles. Exactly have they done? That's so bad. I'm just curious because, you know, new here. Well, if you go out there and you ask anyone on the streets, well, they all love the oracles. They love them so much. You see, I had an accident about ten years after I was assigned here at this guild. But I had to do some modifications to my own self. And that's when it dawned on me. You see... Have any of you experienced strange voices? Maybe visions? I have. Yeah, me too. I have as well. Have. I also have. I feel normal! Can't say I have. Hmm. Well, if you continue to stay... Well, if you stay in Volunder... The voices will become more common, happen every day, and, well, you'll start to forget that it's not, how would I say it, that it's not exactly your voice. After a while, it becomes your voice. And, well, we all... Don't exactly like that. We have been around for about 20 years now, and the more uh, operations that I do for people concerned about their mental health. Well, mental health is important. Yes. It seems they all remember one thing before forgetting. And it's these voices. I don't know if it has something to do with the undead problem that they so... Well, it's understandable they want to keep it hidden. But it's either that or the oracles themselves. You see, I came up with a theory a couple years ago. If the oracles control and know exactly, exactly what everyone is thinking, what they want to do, well, how could their stories of well, never being wrong about predicting the future 
if they truly knew everyone in Volunder, their deepest thoughts and deepest secrets, if they truly controlled everything, how could they be wrong? So, I ask all of you, from Brothier's heart to mine, how about we free these poor, trapped minds. Are we emancipating the working class? We <laughs> are freeing everyone. Finally! Mr. Cobalt. Okay, I'm in! You don't have to say anything else! I'm in! I've been in from the start. Or I've been my best friend for as long as he's been with us. He's been always been on the straight and narrow and... I just had a conversation with the rest of these fine fellows I've been traveling with, and most of us are in agreement. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of these oracles and set things right, Mister Peterson. Yeah, I will stab them. Well, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Ask away. What is Lunders? I guess interaction with Martin Dur. <sighs> well, <laughs> if it's under its own separate control from the oracles, are there so a greater? Well, Martin Dur used to, uh, well, be pretty independent, but more and more of the. <gasps> How do you say wildlife and the occasional bandit attack made it complicated for Mortimer's complicated, well, spot on the map? There's a lot of travel through here, and well, where there's people, there's crime. So, very recently, the Civilians that used to, well, help protect Mortem Durr, these civilians there, well, they kind of made a deal, the local leadership down there, with the oracles, and well, I don't know if you've been there, but, well, for years now, the <laughs> Bronze Watch and Iron Watch make sure that... Mortem Dur is safe. Um, Mortem Dur, or rather Vlunder, seems to be quite productive. Why? Yes. Why would removing their power be good? What? Everyone seems happy. Well, no, because they're forced to be how they are. They need to have freedom in order to have true fulfillment. They're slaves. Exactly. Why do they need? You why have do to... they need? Why do they need true fulfillment? Even, they seem happy. Even if you don't want to get in the slime pit, you have to have the option, or else the slime pit isn't real. That's how I see it, Mister Human. What is better? To be happy, but have no free will. Or to live your life normally. Have sad moments, sad years, hard times. But at least you are you. What The, the petty individuality of the poor does not really concern me. Not just the poor! You're better off not asking Ambrose anything about free will or anything similar. He doesn't really understand it. Well, he certainly seems to not be around here. And he certainly seems to be... <laughs> how you say, have heavy pockets. But... Well, it's all a matter of perspective. It's clear How would it that... help me 
to overthrow the oracles. Who are you planning to fill their stead? Well, the very community, the people of Valunder, they should be in charge of their own lives. They Ever should. There literally no harm in getting rid of them. Well, if you think about it, they're all happy and content to do their jobs. They help. They help each other feed and house each other. It seems rather good. Imagine if you remove it. What then? Are they going to go run around crazy and stop doing their jobs with their newfound free will? Everything might come to a halt. Well, I don't know about you. Everyone might starve. I would rather, well, simply die than not have my free will, Mr. Human. I think everyone, but maybe not you, would, well, agree with me. And he kind of looks around and all the dwarves are like shaking their head very violently. And they're all kind of looking at Ambrose now. Ambrose, don't you think it might be a little bit biased? Ambrose, have you ever think I am I am just trying to show another perspective here. Have you ever considered that you have free will, so you really can't empathize with people who never have? You have the option to choose. Some people have never had the option to choose, and thus are not at the level you are. So we must elevate them to that level. I have free will, but I still have a code. Okay, a- Ambrose, Ambrose, let, let, let me make this simple for you. It's very hard to remain on this code. A- a- Ambrose, you know how the rest of us, myself, Hugh, Mo, Bug, Otto aren't forcing you to go through with the whole killing the oracles thing. If you wish to leave, we're letting you. Yes. Okay. In this circumstance, the everyone who isn't the oracles doesn't have that choice. They are forced to do what the they are forced to do what the oracles tell them they are pretty much slaves aren't the oracles thousands of years old what? they see they seem quite wise Lunder is quite productive everyone their, is happy their wisdom is false it's just well, gathered I believe they are only wise because they well have control. What if they're just vampires, Ambrose? We Maybe they have been they actively so they've been actively hunting vampires. They even helped me when I was bitten by one. How do you know that maybe they're not finding them so they can keep them all safe? How else would they live that long? Ambrose, do you really I do not think... see the proof that they are vampires. Ambrose, do you really think a government with this with this amount of firepower wouldn't be able to hunt down and kill one vampire? Well, there's an entire undead problem which we have yet to deal with. And For all we know, the vampire is the undead problem. You never know! Well, I... To know what this undead problem Every is. city has criminals and problems. Lunder is no different. But they have one less problem. What do you mean? Nobody is unhappy. Hey, uh, oh, oh, uh, hey, uh, my man Willie, uh, are you happy? I, some days, yes. I am happy that I, well, that I can think for myself. There you go! Why should the masses think for themselves? Because they They're not the, educated. They deserve the right to choose! <laughs> I guess I should... I do not Bug follow... Is choice. 
I should give you give it to you straight, kid. It's as if take the situation that we had earlier today. I'm pretty sure Balazar mentioned this. Take take the the conversation we had. We all were in agreement that if we were gonna go through with this, that you had your choice to help us kill the oracles, or you could just go home like you said you were. Take that same situation and the fact that you don't want to do this and take into account that instead of us giving you that choice, we all said, well, Ambrose, we are going to go and kill the oracles and you're going to help us and there's nothing you can do to stop us. Do you kind of understand where we're going there? But you are objectively wrong and i am objectively right you okay, aren't then. objectively okay, then. anything balzar we're, we're we can't keep on running in circles with him circles he's with gonna be stuck him. in his ways just let him do his own thing we're here to stop the oracles whether he helps us or not please let me know if you decide to uh go after the undead problem I will be waiting outside. I... I will not interfere with you. I want to remind you, Mr. Human. Do not tell anyone about this little meeting. Do you understand? I give my word as a nobleman. Good. Well... You shall have an honest war. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, and, well, if you do talk, you all see now in the blink of an eye, William kind of reach inside of his coat, like, pocket, and you see him thrust something out, and all of a sudden, there is this extremely loud noise and a puff of smoke, and Ambrose, the piece of paper next to you on the wall, explodes same with the stone behind it and Whoa! you hear this deafening sound kind of echo in this kind of small room and you see now as you look back to William Peterson he is holding some kind of firearm like flint lock device that most of you <laughs> have never ever seen anything like it you see white smoke coming out of the barrel. A Ambrose kind of jumps and screams. And then he starts chuckling. Is that a magic wand? <laughs> no. And you speak of free will. What a hypocrite. Going to kill me. Well. If I don't do what you want. And Ambrose tries to open the locks on the door. <laughs> it's The door is still kind of ajar. No. Oh. And a as you start to walk out, you hear, well... You have the free will to talk, and I have the free will to blow your brains out. <laughs> Amen, brother! <sighs> so, for the rest of you, how about I go over the plan? Sure! You see, Ambrose, um, are you just kind of like outside of the, of the, of the door, or... Are you no. going up the, the ladder? He's going up the ladder, going to the tavern. Okay. Up there, you're meeting with Sam, who just kind of gives you uh, just like a weary eye as you kind of sit down waiting. But there are no words ex exchanged. I'll just nod and then say good luck and then go to the tavern. that, uh, Like the tower. Oh, okay. Got that it. we're staying yeah, in. The, uh, in. Got it. Okay. So... Back down in, in the room. So, I'm sure you've been hearing of this festival coming up in, well, I think, well, I'd say, I think it's three or two days away now. I have a hard uh, time remembering some things, but, well, you see, if you marched up into the Oracle's district, you would be killed almost instantly. 
Why is that? Cool. Well, I'm sure you all look tough enough. You could take the occasional bronzy or iron guard, but, well, up there in the adamant district, there are simply those called the adamant watch. You see, we know almost nothing about them, other than, well, they make people go missing, if you catch my drift. Well, um, the, there might be a way for a group of us to circumnavigate that. Well, well you forget, I have the writ of passage from Captain Exactly. We go in under the guise of talk, of seeing about that undead job. Come back after dealing with it. We don't have to deal with all the Adam adamantine guard. We're right there in the Oracle's throne room or whatever the hell. Well, you cannot get in without being escorted by, well, quite a few of these adamant watch, I'm afraid. You see, from the few times people have seen them, we've deduced there's some kind of half-dwarf, half Duragar, half I believe. What? Uh, oh, yeah. Duragar? What is a Duragar? Dark dwarf. Sort of yes. more dwarf, but more edgy. Oh. Exactly. From what? What is edgy? Very deep in the well lands, you can find them. I'm not sure how the oracles got a hold of such strange beings, but they move as if they're shadow. As if, well, I don't really know. For really, the only people that see them can't exactly say what they look like. I've met Dwaragar before. I've talked with them too. Yes, they are rare in these lands, but these half-dwarf, half Duragar, half they definitely are not, how you would say, <sighs> natural. In any book I've read, well, they're far from natural. So, however they, well have those, they definitely are a big problem. So, we've been devising a plan the past few months, and we believe that the best time to strike would be during this festival. Now you see, the oracles usually give a speech near the end of the festival, and... Well, there are still the occasional adamant and iron watch. It will be much easier than marching up to their dark castle. Well, it's one way to celebrate the coming of a new century. Yes. Yes, well... It might serve you to take this undead job I've been hearing about, for if it's something not even the Adamant Watch can handle, it's going to be a problem when Volunder is freed, I'm sure. You know what this problem is, by chance? All I know is that, well, it's in that tower near the Adamant District. That is all I know, per se. I, I believe uh, Diller scouted it out. It's pretty heavily guarded, but if you formally take this job, well, I think... I think you could deal with it.
I mean, I'm always up for killing some undead. Not a huge fan. They're not alive, so, like, you know, the only one I really like is this guy right here. And Bug, like, points towards humors. He kind of smiles a little and nods towards Bug. Yeah, well, sure. there was that Wraith I met one time. He was kind of nice, but mostly this guy. Other undead, not as good. You are lucky that the, well, general population does not know of this undead problem. Or they would probably be very, well, hostile towards you, Mr. Skeleton Man. You can just call That's me not his name. Uh, <laughs> that's quite funny. But, I get well, that a lot. Mm. <laughs> well, I think you should take that job. And then, by the time you're done, of, done with that, I'm sure we can commence planning with the festival job. Does well, that sound like a plan to all of you? Yeah, it sounds good to me, but we'll have to do this fairly quickly. Like you said, two to three days till the festival. We'll have to solve the undead problem and still leave us enough time to plan. Do you think we'll be able to do it? Mm -hmm. I think with people that have macho as I see on all of you, I think you can probably handle it. And if not, well, everyone here is a pretty good fighter. And after we kill the oracles, well, I'm sure we could get some hired help. But it would definitely be better if you all, <laughs> if you all, well, took care of it early. Yeah, what I was thinking is maybe... We let it known to the oracles that we want to take this job. Maybe we can go there tonight so they recognize us as coming in the night to lose suspicion. Once we solve the problem and it's time, we can go in the night again when they aren't expecting it and whack them by surprise. We're thinking I would visit them tonight and then if they don't allow it and I can get all the information let you know then. I see. If... They do give you more info I would like to know before you go delving in. I'm quite curious why they're so worried about something like this. It's not very often the oracles are scared of much of anything, especially to ask, well, foreigners for help. <laughs> It sounds like a plan. You take the job, you fix the undead problem, come back here, tell me exactly what the problem was, we make a little plan, and we strike them when they least expect it, and in front of all of Vulunder to see. Grand Scott. Got one hell of a way of doing it. Yes. If you're going yeah, to change something as, well, set in stone as this, you might as well make sure the whole neighborhood sees the tower crumble. Ew. I mean, that big beam I did. The old dragon thing a while back. No? Alright, fair enough. Oh, you all look powerful enough. I'm sure... We I got a knife! Oh... Well, that should help. <laughs> I got two knives! Whoa, I got more hope. than two knives! He's got about 12 knives hidden in various places on his person. I believe uh, I currently only have four! Well, I like you, Mr. Kobold. Thank you! And, well, if all of this goes through, I have... Well, I don't think... All of Valunder has enough gold to pay you all with. But, well, that... That giant sum of gold the oracles are offering should pay for all this nicely. And if you actually... Or if we actually go through with killing the oracles, maybe I can 
look in my storage rooms of this old gunslinger's guild and maybe give you all some fun toys for your future. So, I think this meeting is adjourned unless any of you have more questions. I know everything there is to know about, well, Valunder, and I knew Brock for many, many years. If you have any questions. Mo would like to um, ask him a question. Um, could I, uh, could, could you go, could we go to the corner of the room over there and I could talk to you real quick? I think it's better if we speak freely. We don't want to keep secrets here. That's kind of what we're working against. I, under, I, I understand that, but I think, I think that'd be best just, you know, I did some work for you. I trust you. I hope you trust me. If we could just, uh, share a quick word. I... It'll be very quick and harmless. I guess. And he kind of almost in a um, in a uh, Captain Jack Sparrow way of walking, make his way over to you, and he kind of puts his head next to yours. And then, do you want to go like in a different like chat real quick to say this, or? Uh, if you would like to, sure. Yeah. Please. Oh no. <laughs> this is terrifying. Yeah, that does not Bode well. I'm ready for us all to die. <laughs> if we all die, uh, Mo stabs well. us in the back. Man, no, this guy likes me. It's fun. I was just gonna. I, it's funny. He's like, we should speak freely, and then Mo cut me off. But Bug was gonna ask, "Can you fly?" <laughs> <laughs> you can see his wings. Probably. I know Bug's been looking at his wings this whole time. Like, whoa. <laughs> It, hurt, it hurts me to, like, not go, because, like, out of character, I want XP and to, like, <laughs> do things with the party, but it's just yeah. not Ambrose. Ambrose might be the only survivor, because I have a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach that Mo is going to stab us all in the back. Also, I the oracles I have mind control. Yeah, I think... So. I think that Ambrose doesn't like undead, though. So I think Boris CC would find a way to guide him into fighting the undead. Well, I mean, I Ambrose mean, already uh, says he was going to do that. He just doesn't want to kill the oracles. I, he has lunar, I just... lunar barrier and walls, so I mean, we're free from mind I'm not, control for a little bit. I'm not that high a level, Ambrose though. I can't is use literally it. I literally reading for you could use it. You just I actually changed my not mind, like, right after... Um, and I like DM Zach. I'm like, actually, I'm not going to the tavern. I'm going to the front gate to see, yeah, uh, like, if I can get that job, the uh, undead shop. And then you guys were are like, I was like listening in, and you guys have to get the undead job. So I'm helping anyway. Yeah. I had a plan for that. <laughs> but Ambrose no. is literally rooting for a triplicate group of Emperor Palpatines. But no, like. Brian, I gave you the innate ability to do it. It's just a third level spell. Yeah, I don't have level three spell slots. No, but you can still use it. You like, can that's still what, do that's it. It's like a innate, it's like a racial thing. Yeah, that's your innate oh. ability to do it. But if you it's, were to use it's it not the exact same, but yeah, but if you were to use it at a higher level, then you would need to use the spell slot. That's what I was meaning. Weird. Like that. All right. So yeah, you, all right. you have that. Oh, all right. So it seems like we have a plan. And there is where I will end the session with you guys. While all this is happening, um, Ambrose, did you want this to be private? or Nope. Alright. So, while all of you have been talking, he left, uh, Ambrose left the abandoned gun slingers guild, and he has been currently walking towards the adamant district and ambrose as you approach this giant black shiny wall you see this kind of brick gate that stands in your way from the rest of the adamant district are there With any guards 
yes, there you see um there is a um there is about four iron watch and about ten um uh bronze watch and then there is a dwarven figure in the middle of all of them that seems to be shrouded. I am not going to go towards the shrouded guy, but okay. um, I will call out when I'm like 10 feet away. Ho there! Yes, state your business. And one of the iron wash kind of step forward. I'm a nobleman part leading a co a coalition of bounty hunters i am here to accept the bounty or get more information rather for the undead problem i see well i'm also working with lord kyanite in of Nuln. i see a good business partner that's for sure do you have any uh, documentation from him? It's been a long travel, I'm afraid. I have seemed to lost my documentation. Well, but I assure you, my word is good. We do not let people into the Adamant District by just word, I'm afraid. Come back with documentation and your whole group, please. And we will escort you to the Holy Oracles, and they can brief you on, well, this undead problem. I see. Uh, Ambrose going to walk off. All right. I think that's going to set Ambrose over the edge, just them not showing him respect. Uh, the lights are about to turn blue. And we're just going to go back to the tavern. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll say that everyone else starts to make their way there too. And you all kind of find yourselves back in your room. In the kind of tower part of this tavern. Uh, Drogos, would you like to be with everyone else or in your own room? Drogos is going to be in his own room. Okay, got it. So it is everyone but Drogos. Was I'm point? sorry. Actually, um, can we go back a second? Um, sure. I wanted to talk to that dwarf a little bit more. Yeah. You can say no if you want. No. Um, it's fine. I actually happen to have some information about um, certain sensitive topics. You do. I do. And what would they be? It is too sensitive to speak with you. Hmm. You have a superior. Yes, but he does not have time for people like you. And you see now the dwarven figure kind of looks up at you from the kind of middle of, of this group. And you see it looks like a dwarf, but the skin is much darker, almost a dull gray color. You see his skin almost sh like shimmering in a strange kind of bright purple shimmer across his skin. You see now that he's raised his head more, his eyes are completely glazed over in this white film. And he just kind of glares at you. Ambrose like puts his hands up. Fine, I see I must tell you. Come closer, for I must whisper. It must not escape us. The, um, the strange-looking dwarf looks over at the Iron Watch and kind of nods his head. And the Iron Watch says, He does not want you close to this gate. If you are going to tell anyone, it will be me. He will hear from where he stands. I know of rebellion against the oracles. Hmm. And I know where you can find them. I can assure you 
there is no heresy in this city. Really? Trust me, we would know. <laughs> I see, I see. Have... I'm sure the oracles will be um, quite pleased that you've ignored this warning. Goodbye. Do Amber you sleeves. threaten the oracles of Volunder? Quite the opposite. I've actually come to warn them. But well, you do not heed my words. And thus would it is useless. know useful. of a coming attack. Can you make a uh, intelligence save for me? <laughs> that was a check, not save, but I don't think it matters. Oh, uh, that works, I guess. It's it was a one anyway. Yeah. So, in your head, you get this kind of brief vision of these kind of black beady eyes, and you feel something curl around from your neck up to the back of your head and in an instant you kind of snap out of it and you look up at the guard and he says Mr. Ambrose please do not go around spreading false word of a threat like I said if there was one we would know so please, do not spread false word to panic our people, or we will have to take action. Ambrose just goes, hemph. You will see. In time, you will see. Hmm. All right. So... Would you like to make your way back to the inn now? Yes, please. Okay. So about uh, 30 minutes after all of you have started to like settle down, you hear uh, the trap door swing open again, and you see Ambrose start to climb up. Uh, How was your meeting? It went really well. I'm sure you talked about many secrets you could not tell me. Well, I don't think he really cared if we told you, I mean. It's no matter to me. But well, feel free to speak freely. I do think we're going to take the undead job if you're still interested in that. I am very. <laughs> Good, well. I guess that's our goal for tomorrow, but how do we even get to the oracles? Aren't they in the gate? On on my map, I see uh in the uh, adamantine district. Don't you have the paper? Should you just ask Lord Kylan if he knows how to contact him? Well, didn't Lord Kynite just say that he? That that paper would get us in the what the one that he talked through. Does not Drogos have it? I don't know. I don't. Well, I do believe I guess, Drogos does. Well, I guess we have that for tomorrow. So Moe's going to get up, um, say that he recognizes that today, he may, this morning, he may have caused some very unfortunate events, and I have made drinks for all of you guys as, like, an apology, even though I am not responsible for it, I just partook in it. So, I uh, accept your uh, gift. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's not uh, apology. Yes, <laughs> it's snowberry juice. Um, and bug, I uh yeah. made you a special one with moldy black meat, black mold meat inside of it. 
Um, that's kind of strange. I think mold, you don't like that. I think mold is bad for everyone. Okay, yeah, you, no, you, no, the mold fan. You can have the uh, regular drink then, too, if you like. Um, I use my not... new bartender kit from Genghis Manga, so I was very excited to try out my new skills. Yeah, I've been on like a health cleanse. Actually, I've been drinking water all day. It's been weird. I actually kind of feel better. That and the rest of the blood from this Aerocora head. <laughs> Bug pulls out the Aerocora head and is like leached. <laughs> There's no blood in it anymore. <laughs> He's been sucking it out of the stump. <laughs> You've been using like the neck as like a straw. <laughs> no, he's been like putting his mouth to the stump, <laughs> sucking it out well, so it's head, like a raisin. <laughs> Latching his jaw around the eye socket, you just. <laughs> Mo's gonna take his flask and hand it to Ambrose and say, "Here's to the undead problem." And then you guys can just pass it around the circle. And to solving it. I. I know now not to take drinks from anyone. Okay. So I think I will pass. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to suck the rest of this blood out of the head. If you have any normal ones, I will take the extras. I don't want the moldy one. But if uh, Otto and Bug aren't having them, I will take them. It's like it's like a it's all a flask. So the flask is like just for people to drink out of. So I gave you the flask. Oh, it's so a pass around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big ass yeah, flask. Pour out. It's a big we'll flask. Well, it's old. just it's just a little sip. I'm not I'm not oh. ball, I'm not balling. I don't have a I don't, I don't have, I don't have, <laughs> you a have dining one of those oversized flask. comical flasks. <laughs> I don't have a dining set, so you all you all get one drink. Amber soy drink. That you have like will the not. About you, Drogos is in the other room, right? Yeah, he is. I I will just drink like half of it and like, ask <laughs> if he wants any. <laughs> what about you, uh, humorous? To give him back, to give him back the hat. What are you talking about? Do you do I look like I can drink anything? I forgot you are a skeleton. That's very insensitive, Mo. <laughs> Well, I guess more for me then. Did Ambrose drink as the rest? Well, I, well, hold on now, Ambrose. Bug, you want to try some? No, Bug, it's really good. It's really good. I gave it a. I drank some earlier. It tasted really good. I've been on like this water cleanse. It's been weird. Water and blood. Like ah. um, and Cold like mango. Are known for their health cleanses. What's thicker? What water and blood? Snatched. Yes. Uh, it kind of depends. It depends on the race of creature. Amber it's just starts water. like laughing. Before um, before Ambrose finishes the flask, was gonna snatch it back from him. Oh, I am. I apologize. <laughs> I did not realize. Um, <laughs> where did you get those snow bears? I'm quite intrigued. There's just some uh, little fruit shop in the market area. Oh God, was that the mango guy? It was. Get I, from, I please don't get from guy, the mango actually. guy. That, that guy. I'm, that oh, guy God, told Ambrose he was gonna God. die. I'm worried for his wife. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he buried her under the gazebo or something. Oh, his wife is dead. Yeah, that's what he told me. She died of mango-related trauma. That's not what he told me. What did he tell you? Uh... I forget, but I remember it was. He, I think he said something about like, I, was it like it's something natural? And then I accused him of killing her, and he said no. And I'm pretty sure I he killed she, her. I thought he said she like fell down the stairs. I thought it was something like that. It was something weird. I, I'm pretty sure he's definitely lying. But <laughs> I, I know, know he was totally years. buried underneath his his fruit stand. Yep. Yep. Though. If Ambrose dies in 10 years, I know where he'll be, so I can go kill him. In the middle of conversation, Ambrose um, just seems to, like, stumble and then goes limp. <laughs> Ambrose! Jeez, I guess he's tired. Balasar is going to walk uh, over and, like, check his pulse and make sure he isn't, you know, dead. He is definitely... Oh, 
alive, but his he seems very hot all of a sudden. Hello, can Balasar can I like open his eyelids, see if like his eyes are dilated or something? Um, as you do that, you see his eyes are his actual like people like pupils are giant. <laughs> Can I infer what might have caused this? Um, go ahead and make an insight check. <laughs> you have only seen these symptoms I'm once looking. before. Mo's gonna drink from the drink. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have only seen these symptoms act so quickly once before. And that's when someone in your platoon had had snuck out one night and bought and then consumed a lot of life weed. I, <laughs> I recognize this. As Mo, as Mo finishes taking his drink, he also starts to stumble oh. around. <laughs> what? And sure, sure enough... enough. Like it's life weed poisoning. He's been drugged. Mo, uh, do you know when you like unlock a like ragdoll in G mod and they just ragdoll <laughs> on the floor? That is exactly what happens to Mo. <laughs> Can Bug go up to Ambrose and try to do a sternum nogi on him? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I want to try to wake him up. Go ahead and make a <laughs> make a strength check. Sternum nogi check. There's no response. Oh yeah. god! <laughs> He's fucked! <laughs> also, so, like, like, Bug has some basic medical training because they go, oh, sternum rugby, wake him up. Then Bug like, Ambrose, does a like, good sternum rugby. I just want to say that in first responder, that's what it, what it is actually called. And you yeah, rub your knuckles <laughs> over a, ner a nerve and it really hurts. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's how you oh, wake so someone it, up. Like, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. for it's, Ambrose. It's, for Ambrose and Mo, what you're seeing right now, do you know the old Windows like 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 uh, startup screen saver where there's stars flying by? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> you are seeing that right now, and it feels like you are falling at a million miles per hour. You, I gonna need a hand here. I got you. Uh, Salazar is going to draw 46 feet of rope from his pack. Say which kind of Time to lynch him. Which <laughs> time to ensure that there is no feasible fucking way <laughs> that Mo Hernandez can escape from this fucking bot. Why did he drug himself? He's <laughs> wait, 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 wait. T time out. Time. Everyone, time out. No, time out for a second, Matt. What are you doing right now? You are you taking rope out of my backpack? No, I no, he's taking just to wrap out of Because I back. literally have forty six feet of rope. Also, oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> because because I have a very common pack, line. which comes with fifty feet of rope standard, and I've already used four feet for hostage taking. <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> the rest okay. of the forty six so on Mo. I'm using the other forty six. To tie Mo up and make sure he cannot move when he, he regains I consciousness. Be Balazar in that endeavor. You, as you both like do this, they are just limp, totally limp. And as you, you guys spend... do the... oh, sorry. Uh -huh. no, sorry, sorry. Well, just uh, I just be careful not to meta game here, guys. Because as far as you're concerned, I'm, I turned not, off the that... hat. <laughs> you and... handed Ambrose a drink and he got knocked yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, and I and I, and I drank it too, all excited and got knocked out. Say, Balistar has figured out exactly what is going no, on. Well, no, because, because no, Matt, though, think for a second, though, just it, uh, that does, but also they think, and then I took it and just got knocked out too. And you, there would seemingly be no incentive for Modus go poison Except people. That's not how Balasar thinks. But th that's, but that's, Danny hit a I can see you being suspicious, but I just, I think it's. Lucas, let me, let me explain Balasar's th thought process to you. Okay, sure. You came in. You were very insistent that Bug and everyone else take a drink of this. Mm -hmm. Ambrose chugged it 
and has damn near overdosed on life weed. Sure. <laughs> then, the minute Balasar realized what was happening, you chugged what was left of it and immediately went unconscious. So there's, <laughs> I right. think there's a few mis- that as you trying to cover your ass. Sure. Yeah. I think there's a few miscommunication issues there. I, I drank it before Balasar rolled his check. I drank like when as 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 Joe was falling as Ambrose was falling down. I also drank a little bit. I didn't. I did not chug the whole thing, and it's I don't know if I was like really pushy. To drink it when I just passed out, like well, visibly well, in front there. of everyone. <laughs> sure, no one would but, think alcohol works that. Fast. And the, well, it's not alcohol though. And then exactly. and then also that's what powers our nose. I know. Now I know. Now wait a minute. And so, so I did not chug the whole drink. And I did not come in pushing it very heavily. I just said I made a drink to apologize. So at this point, it's very possible that the what I was sold also was not was it could be not my fault. I, while I may have administered the drink, it might not be of me creating it. And so I think just to go from all of a sudden to just tie me up and everyone assumes that I'm doing something bad, I'm worried there's a little bit of metagaming in there. Because I totally get I totally get suspicion. That totally makes sense. But just to use fifty feet of rope to instantly restrain me mm-hmm. just feels like a and then having like Michael's also joining in on this just feels like a little bit like of too much intense reaction. I was, all I right. was planning to talk so, about the Ambrose. Think, too. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, yeah. Hold on. Um, so, Balzar and Humorous have both been suspicious of you since like the day we met. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like the, yeah. Like, so like, like, it's not. Bug it's not out of the realm of possibility. Not, not to mention from Bal- from Balasar's point of view. Mo has taken repeated actions that have put the safety of the rest of the party in jeopardy, and Balasar will not fucking stand for it. I, I would just like to remind. I would just like to remind. Got gotcha you a moment where he can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mo Hernandez is a traitorous bastard <laughs> who should be hung from his feet until the blood rushes to his head. And <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> Matt, you don't have to go into I that much detail every single criminal. time. I I would yes, just I like do. to re- remind everyone that no. Nobody knows that uh, Mo is like working for the devil. Yeah, so oh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. What that's, what that's just what I'm thinking. Like, well, you didn't hear that bug? I was. Um, I was. Okay, and yeah, and that's just what I'm thinking. Like, I totally get you guys are suspicious, but it just even as much as suspicious as you are, Mo has never just handed poison to the gang and been like, "Drink poison, please." But it's I've, very... I've, I've just, I've just like, <laughs> I've just like taken money off people, but I've never actively like tried to kill or harm any of you. So I, ju- I just, this, with that it's information, do what you want, I guess. pretty obvious that you just tried to poison everyone, though. <laughs> and I'm super confused everyone was, I don't like, know. Lucas, it did, I, uh, it did feel weird, like, that Bug didn't want to drink it. And yeah, it was that's, like, that's oh, I'm, I'm just thinking. on, like, a water cleanse right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, and that's, that's I mean, the little that I gave it, Brian, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, <laughs> no, because the mang, no, because after the mango, what I've been doing is, because Bug got the water skin... I, hey, if you look on my rations, I ate a mango, and then I've, what I've been doing is with the air core head, I've been lowering its weight for about the last two sessions. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, it's, equal I, parts, it's equal parts mango and completely in fucking character it's for fucking... Bug to be subsisting entirely off the juices he can suck out of, of an air core's head. Of, of so, a dead I'm bird. sorry. Can, yeah, I should I should have taken we can, with it. I'm like, this is really funny. I never got to mention it before. Yeah, no, we can point fingers and say metagaming all we want, but just keep in mind it's a funny D&D game. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, not a Brennan, we're not it's pulling a Brennan out of it. We're not pulling a Brennan. Yeah. Bug thinks you both drank the mold or something. Like you I was thinking <laughs> one. I thought you both of you just had the normal one and not the one that was poisoned. I thought you just had like the normal everything one that was like, poisoned. made a while back. Oh, yeah, everything mold, was? I poisoned uh, both. I just made one that had meat. I said yeah, one that like, had moldy like, meat in it because I thought, I thought Bug you, would like that. Alright, I thought you only put the poison one in the moldy one. He was relying on Bug and no one likes maggots. He likes Lucas, bugs and maggots. I will give credit where credit is due. Your entire thought process behind <laughs> I have to make two drinks. One that is that might be very appetizing to kobolds and one for everybody else yeah. was very well thought out and it, it was, was really well done. And I applaud you for it. <laughs> However, <laughs> the most compliment I've ever heard, Matt. Right at, the, 
at the penultimate moment, right that final key step, you stumbled. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, all great I'm not worried about being caught because I'm not going to be because I have nothing on me, but caught. yeah. I don't think so. Bug d- Bug thinks that something ha- heinous has happened, but it's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> okay. now, now that I have t- now that I have tied Mo Hernandez up and have asked Tumors to keep an eye on him for when he inevitably wakes up, uh, can I roll medicine to see if I can remember how to like maybe help ease Ambrose out of the effects of the life weed overdose? Drink. I drank sure, so yeah. much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Go I mean, I, I tried to stir the nogi check. him and I couldn't wake him up. Because a certain nogi, if I'm not mistaken, that's how you wake someone out of a heart attack. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> that's how you get someone up after a Damn heart it, attack. So, Alex was here. Balazar, you remember back when that happened in your platoon? Um, He, the, the uh, person that took the life weed he also mixed it in a liquid form and he took um one drop of it and you remember him being out for at least three hours and being totally unresponsive okay we, we have it, a slight problem but also just wait one second i didn't pour the whole poison thing in it i put like i said i put like a few drops in each thing and shook it around i know okay all right just <laughs> i don't want you to think i dumb. emptied I just want you to think I emptied the whole thing in there. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, no. that life weed is a very, very poison. Po- I po- love that life weed is canonical toxic. after the <laughs> like, third session out of a dumb joke. So, I got some bad news here. They are dead. <laughs> I know. They're not dead. They're not dead. It's life weed poisoning. I know a few idiots who've done this shit before. The problem is with Ambrose. Specifically, the the only experience I really have with this is one guy in my company from like 15 years ago. He took a drop of it. A drop of a drop of like liquid life weed. And it knocked him out for three hours. And when he woke up, he was still out of action for another two. Minimum. Ambrose, Bellasar is going to pick up the empty, now pretty much empty flask. <laughs> drank, I'm going to say about three pounds. It was not three pounds. Well, I he do doesn't know. know that. Yeah, oh, okay, sorry. I'm assuming it was a full <laughs> flask. Oh, God. <laughs> Just straight life weed? <laughs> oh, no. no. Life weed poison. <laughs> so, I think for all we know, he's he might be out for a few days. Uh I, great. Just great. Just one more just, thing to just come around and mess up. When will this boy do, learn? And he was gonna point at Mo. Where did he even buy he this stuff? Does anyone have any idea what the hell Mo could have wanted to poison us for? Oh, hold on, uh, hold on. I don't, I don't know that he funny. did. We don't know that. He, he drank it, too. Yeah, he drank it, too, so we can't rule that out of suspicion. The only reason why I <gasps> the medical you, vendor! The only reason why I helped you tie him up is because, you know, I've never seen this happen before, and who knows if people go deranged after, you know, going under such effects. I was actually going to ask you to help me tie up the kid, too, just in case. Be a bit out of it, but it's... As far as I know, they shouldn't go... They aren't gonna flip out on us. No, hold um, out. Another thing. Moe's been trying to turn his life around, so don't go, you know, shoving things down the kid's throat. I mean, you return the hat. My, so. my, 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 my big thing is he... He very recently stole said hats from a demon store and it took us almost half a day to get him to return it. But he did it. He did do it! Look, all I'm saying it was that, that mango vendor! All I'm saying is that we need to just roll with the punches, I guess. He obviously had his reasons for giving the drink. It was a celebratory one. Maybe he didn't know it was poison. Maybe he did. And we'll have to ask when him when he wakes, wakes up. up. 
when he wakes up, Balasar points to Mo. I'm going to be asking him some fucking questions. We should probably untie him if he's not going to go psycho. No, no. Because in the event that it turns out it was a poisoning, I don't want him bailing. I'm betting that that mango vendor thought we would all take it because he wanted to kill Ambrose the other day. I uh, just, I just so you're not confused. I'm not sure if you're just like, if this is just Bugs' character, but I didn't get the stuff from the mango. He vendor. thinks you did. Okay. <laughs> hey, as soon as you said fruit, he went, "Oh fuck, the mango guy." <laughs> <laughs> he thinks you got it all from the mango vendor. That fucking evil bastard. <laughs> The mango vendor is the source of all of our problems. <laughs> he's the he's the hidden oracle. He's the final <laughs> he's boss the of the entire like entire. <laughs> you know how they were talking about the ear he's the earlier. He's creating them. the undead problem. He's throwing it's the, the mango, mango vendor into the cemetery to raise zombies. You're gonna see so Astrid hard. back. The oracles are the red herring. Brock's real enemy was the mango vendor. <laughs> Don Boyanetti he was also the mango salesman. <laughs> oh my. Doug has every single job in Vulander. <laughs> it's just one guy in Vulander. It's just one. Doug. It's one He's just really fast. Moving very fast. You know, every, like, you know when, like. Location in the city pretending to be different people. You know that part in X Men where Quicksilver is moving, like, really fast and, like, time freezes? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, he's doing that, basically. Okay, so with Ambrose passed out on the floor, um. Mo Hernandez tied to a bed and everyone else starting to um, settle down for the night. I think that is where we will end the session here. Very important session right here. Yeah, you know, I thought it would be more important, but <laughs> stuff happens. Like, you know. Honestly, no. Some pretty important Mo stuff Mo happens. poisons the group. <laughs> One person. <laughs> Am Ambrose tries to go to the oracles. <laughs> Thus ends this session of All's Fair and Poisoning. This hey, that's not the name of it. <laughs> no, this Brog's poisoning. Session... Brog's poisoning. <laughs> this session was called From One Side to the Other. Because you were supposed to meet with the oracles, but <laughs> Ice Cube oh, happened. Oh. Alright, maybe if we didn't, like, you know, crush the entire inn, we would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is called Ice to Meet You. Yes, it is. I'm literally changing it. I'm literally changing it to Ice to Meet You. That was so funny. I'm so sorry about the ice. Like I'm this. so sorry. That was this so is, funny. Was, this is even more cursed than like the first session or whatever. My goal is to make them more cursed. As okay. All of well, my I'm notes... scared to see what the last one is. <laughs> okay, oh guys, guys, guys. All of my notes for this session are just related to shit Mo did that got <laughs> us into trouble. Like, yeah. you, you didn't write down anything about the whole like. Oh no, that's really important. Too. Meeting. I write my notes at the end, but like oh. so far, I have three lines of notes that are just. Let's see. Mo stole this guy's hat from Dark Horde. Refuses to admit it was branded. Mo attempts to poison party with non-lethal life weed. Ambrose drank way too much. <laughs> All my notes Mo are from Bugs. Returns have to Dark you. Lord. Decides he wants to work for actual Satan. <laughs> I don't write down notes. So. Yeah. I've tried. The videos are my notes. Yeah. yeah uh, bug. Uh, my notes are always from Bug's perspective. <laughs> what were your notes for this session, Bug Bungus? The only note was flute makes dry ice. <laughs> <laughs> Bug I mean, it's right. true. Bug's it's got true. Real, uh, would you <laughs> like? Uh, I don't write a ton. Of, it it kind of depends on the session, you mm -hmm. know. Like some sessions, I will write a lot. Some session. Uh Dubatine was the name of the Mango Man. Was oh, it? oh. By the way, in case you're wondering. Dubatine. Oh, Dubatine. Yeah, Dubatine. My, my note for that session was Dubatine Mango Man, the wife murderer, will be in Elzmira in 10 years. <laughs> because you told me where he would be in 10 years. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about that. Also, yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Also, uh, 
I have a link to the deals in business video in my notes. Okay. <laughs> my, my notes for this session are, uh, in addition to the t to the three I just mentioned, met with Gunslinger Guild, actual domestic terrorists. <laughs> Mango Man totally killed his wife. <laughs> that was established long ago. <laughs> Most of my uh, notes for this s session are about things that did not happen. <laughs> I like to keep my notes very, like, short and concise. Zach, I sent you my compendium. Hmm? I sent you my oh. compendium. Okay. That's well, a note well, for your campaign. single note I've ever taken. Where is it? It's, I shared it with you on Google. <gasps> uh oh.